what did you see New Orleans do to change things in the fourth quarter? Uh, nothing other than just throw the ball more and abandon the run. It was the same route, same stuff that they did earlier in the game. They didn't change anything. Didn't, didn't change the protection, didn't really try to max protect uh, anything like that. I think Jameis knew he needed to get the ball out a little quicker, maybe get, it, get the ball off a little quicker. But other than that, uh, they didn't change other than they decided to go, you know, we weren't, they weren't going to run the ball, you know, and when they were two scores, two scores down. They had said that they felt like New Orleans had started to chip a little bit more, maybe after halftime. Yeah, so a little I, bit. Yeah, maybe a little bit there, maybe because we'd gotten to them a little bit. So maybe that – it didn't really change the protection, the way they slid the protection, did that stuff. But they did kind of bring those guys in and chip the ends a little bit more. Yes, they did do that. And when you look at the pass rush that you did get, I mean, for you considering what last year was, how encouraging was that to see? Well, the whole yeah. thing to me for three quarters was really encouraging. I, that, that's what – um, I was so anxious to see where we were from last year, and um, I, you know, had really anticipated that game and, and really wanted to show that these guys have really improved and that we can we can play that kind of football. And I thought for three quarters we looked like we we're one of the better defenses. We were a, a, a good defense, and we played our ass off. And I thought those guys they followed the game plan. They were into it. The crowd was into it. I really want to thank them. And I thought that was a, a really good crowd. Um, and I just thought that well, that's the way you want to play. I felt that on the sideline. I felt like the guys coming off the sideline. We gave up two plays to Hill in that first quarter on those runs where we made some mental mistakes on. We set the front wrong one time and we didn't adjust on the other one on the actual touchdown run. We came to the sideline, we got those fixed and never saw that problem again. So that's, that's encouraging. That's a big adjustment the guys made and were able to make and we kind of shut that thing down. Um, but the, the pressures, the pass rush, the whole thing there it, for the first three quarters looked like you want defense to look. And the difference was when we went into the fourth quarter, we said the same thing. We said to the sideline, we came over and when we were off, um, I don't remember, I can't remember exact series, whether it was right at the start of the fourth or the end of the third, when it went into the fourth quarter, you know, we're not going to let our foot, we're not going to take our foot off the, the pedal. What got us here is what we're going to keep doing. We're not going to sit here and say, okay, well, we got a two-score lead, you know, or a 16-point lead, and then we're going to all of a sudden play different than what we've played for the first three quarters. We did not take our foot off the, pre the pedal. We kept the pressure on. We just didn't execute it. We just didn't execute it, period. So I'm sorry. Say so sometimes when you have situations like that where teams give up leads and it's a young team, sometimes it's just a matter of some of those guys have not been – on that stage in that situation before in that pressure situation. Did you see any of that at all where these guys just have to learn about those moments? Well it, it's yeah it's a little yeah it's a little bit of that and it's it's just attention it, that's what, when when you're in those situations that's when your details matter absolutely the most and you know for example it, it, uh, the one pass that was down the seam that the, the drive that really hurt us was the very first drive with like 12 minutes to go or something like that, where they just went down the field before four plays. That got their momentum going. Anything that kind of takes them off of that a little bit and uses up a little more clock, all of a sudden it's, it's different. Well, it didn't. I mean, it was like four plays. They're now back in it. Okay. Well, the play that hit on the seam route all the way down to the five-yard line was a pressure. It didn't look like it, but it was a pressure, and we had two guys that had missed assignments on the play that we had run that exact same pressure two series before that and got a sack, exact same pressure. And so why? You know, it's just whether that's what you, you know, that's what it is. It's the nervous part of the, the deal. Um, you know, we're trying to rotate guys. It, it was kind of different. A couple guys were different up front than were before, but those are the kind of things. The, the play that we, they actually hit on the in route at the end of the game that actually got them in the field goal range. That's a blitz. I mean, we blitz. If you watched, Rashawn, Hall, Rashawn Evans got cut in the hole, but we're pressuring the quarterback. We're coming after a man coverage. Well, we didn't play very good leverage. We had to play inside, and we, you know, the guy got inside on us. And we kind of, that's why you play inside leverage. So is it a little bit of like, I don't want to be the guy that makes the mistake, and so do you play a little more tentative than you did earlier on because the, you're, everything's not on the line, maybe? 
I, I can't tell you that. Only those guys could tell you that if they play like that. I didn't, I just, I didn't sense that because there were two other pressures in that last fourth quarter, if you remember right. We ran a pressure up the middle with the safety, and he almost threw us an interception on the sideline, right? So that was a pressure, and we ran it really well, and he had to get rid of it quick, and it could have been a game-ending play. And then we had another pressure where we ran, and we brought the nickel or a corner off the, the edge, unblocked, and he threw it uh, to the – trying to throw a screen to uh, 41, and Michael Walker tackles him for a six-yard loss. So on those plays, the pressures look just like they did earlier in the game. So, yeah, it, it could be some of that. I don't know. But we just, just didn't execute, whether that's because we were anxious or didn't want to make a mistake, and so you play – Cautious, but that's not what we need to be. We just we need to play like we did in the first three quarters for four quarters. That's how we need to play, and not you know I don't know who the heck thinks we Dagon played soft coverage in the fourth quarter, but the guy doesn't know anything about football. What kind of growth did you see from Richie Grant as he obviously he started this season, he started the first game? What kind of growth did you see from last season over the off season coming into the year this year? Oh, I'd say a lot of growth. He's playing a lot better. He's communicating better. And one of the things I'll, I'll attribute that to is the two guys that are in that room with him, uh, Eric Harris and Dean Marlowe. He's got two veteran guys playing behind him who are kind of mentors to him. He's still, he's the guy that's got to take charge. He's the guy to do it. But he's got two guys in that room that really help him. And, and I think that's, that's, Big. I don't want those guys to go unnoticed. They may not be playing a lot. Last year, kind of, Eric played some. Then, you know, Richie, we we're trying to kind of get him in there a little bit. But now it's, 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 and for those two guys who are veteran guys to take a backup role tells you a lot about their character, too. You know, it's not about me, it's about the team and getting these guys ready to play. So I give Eric Harris and Dean a hell of a lot of credit for Richie's growth, too. So going into week to week, you have those perennial receivers who are kind of stars in the league. What is kind of your thought process in those week to week game planning and also your message to the team as you prepare for those teams? Those players, obviously you had Michael Thomas last week, um, Cooper Cup this week. Kind of what are you thinking each week? Well, you're always going to try to take their best players. You know, you're always going to emphasize their best players. And you always got to do things that actually, um, you know, you're going to try to take those guys away and try to give them, you know, very seldom are you once in a while, like down on the goal line, you, you may end up in one-on-one -on -one coverage on those guys because you don't have any choice. You got to got to stop. You can't let them run the ball in. So somebody's going to have to take the toll, and it's usually going to be corners. Uh, but most of the time, you know, you're going to try to do things to take away their best players. I mean, we did things, special things in that game to try to take away 41 in the run game. How many how many runs, rushing yards did he have? Anybody know? I do, by the way. 37. Okay, to me, he's one of the best running backs in the league. That, that guy is a great runner, a great runner. He's a, he's a great athlete. He had 37 yards rushing. That's, that's pretty good. And so we did the things that we needed to do there. You're going to do things, whether it's in the run game or the pass game, to take away their best players. You're always going to do that. How do, you, how do you decide rotations when it comes to defensive line and edge rushers? What's that? How do you decide how you figure out your rotations when it comes to the defensive line and the edge rushers? Well, what you want to do is you, you're trying the best you can is to always have your best four in the game in two-minute situations. You know, you, you don't want to have backups in there in a situation too much that, uh, you know, where you know they're going to go two-minute. You, you got to have your best guys on the field. I, I don't know we did a great job with that this last week. We got to do better. Um, we did at the very end, but, you know, we kind of knew when it got to 12, it was, it was clear after the first two plays at 12 minutes to go that they were going to be in two-minute mode. It wasn't, it wasn't a secret to anybody. So we, we changed and went to, to a rush front. And so we just we got to do a little better job maybe of getting those guys in. But you want them fresh. You know, you got to rotate guys during the, that time because you don't, you know, you don't want to get down there to, to where it really matters and your pass rushers are dying out there because they've been rushing all day. So. Uh, you just got to do a great job of rotation like that. Pardon? How did you think Eva Keedy played? Uh, okay. He played okay. I don't think, you know, I mean, we, we, we didn't win. So nobody played great. I didn't coach great. So that's the bottom line. Um, 
But I thought, you know, he played okay for his first game out there and that kind of stuff. He's, he's, here's one of the things the young guys got to learn is they got to learn about the guys that they're going across from, how to rush them, not just rush. You can line up at Penn State and just come off the edge and be a guy from Northwestern or Indiana or Michigan State or wherever it might be. It's not going to be the same tackle in, the, in this league. Whoever the best tackle was in college is now playing against you in this league. And so some guys you can beat on the edge, some guys you can't beat on the edge. So you, you, it's got to be based more on how to attack that guy than it is about what your repertoire is, especially as a young guy. He's got to learn that stuff. I don't know if you, I mean, if you got, you watch even the, the great rushers like Von Miller, he may take you one time on the edge, and then next time he's going to take you right down the middle and run you back. So the, the tackle's always guessing what it is. When I had Suggs and Doomerville, same thing, those guys. Those guys are young guys and they'll learn that. I mean, that just doesn't come overnight. They're not all of a sudden going to walk in here as rookies and go, geez, I got all this expertise on how to rush all these offensive tackles in this league. Um, it's just that's, that's being a pro. They need to learn those guys because they're probably going to face them for, throughout their career. Uh, it's just like a defensive back. If I'm going against a certain wide receiver, um, I want to have a book on that wide receiver of how to play him. You know, I don't care whether I'm here or another team. If I go up against you know, Michael Thomas or something like that, I should know how he releases, what's his favorite route, what's the stuff, same way with the quarterbacks. I mean, that's being a pro. Those guys will learn that. They're, it's not going to come like that to them. It's going to get there. But the effort, the, the only thing that ever upsets me as a coach is m missed assignments, unless we didn't tell you, you ought to know it, and effort. Because it takes no ability to have effort. If you're tough, you know what to do, and you play as hard as you can play, what else can you ask of somebody? There's going to be sometimes that guy's going to be better than me, and he's going to beat me. But if you're not giving effort, that's the only time I get upset. And to be honest with you, I walked out of that game, and I just was really, really disappointed because I didn't feel that way. I'm not pissed off at all at the players. I'm not. I told them that on Wednesday when I met with them. I'd love to be mad because we lost the game, but I'm not mad because we lost the game. I'm disappointed because we lost the game. Because we made so much progress and had a chance to prove to everybody how much progress we made, and we let them off the hook. And so we just got to come back, and we got to fight back, and we got to get better. And we got to finish. When you talk a bit about how much you expect effort out of your players, can you speak to a bit about how Richie Grant has showed effort in obviously coming into that starting role for the Falcons? He is. That's why we drafted him. I'll guarantee you now, with Coach Smith at the helm, you're, we're not going to draft anybody that doesn't have effort. That's the kind of guys that we look for. The thing that he did at Central Florida, it wasn't the same coverage that we do. We knew that he's going to have to learn a lot as far as coverage. He's going to have to learn a lot as a pro, all that stuff. But the one thing when you watched him on college film, he played – got to watch my language here. He played hard. He played, he played hard. And that was what – we wanted in a safety. That's what I've seen in safeties that I've coached in the past. Whenever we've been a good defense, those safeties, the Rodney Harrisons, the Eric Weddles, the Kevin Byard, those kind of guys, that's the kind of guys, the Ed Reeds, they play hard and fast. And same way with linebackers and those kind of guys. We want linebackers that are downhill, hit you hard. And that's, that's what we're looking for. So it's never going to not be that with Arthur Smith at the, as the head coach. Oh, okay, so. Um, you must like Richie a lot or something. <laughs> <laughs> He's a on right now, man. <laughs> He's a Central Florida grad or something or what? Um, what was I about to say? Uh, so, again, this is another Richie question. I was going to say, can you think about a time in, in this game, if you can, that you were especially impressed with this coverage? In, obviously, not player. offhand. Not a fan. I, I'm not gonna go. I don't. I can't really tell you uh, a particular play now. How, how, how many? How much more difference can you bring pressure-wise this year than you were able to last year based off of what you've seen? Well, you know, anybody, what was our top pressure game last year? Does anybody know, or what was our average pressure for the season? Does anybody know? It's huh? I do. Well, obviously, I do. <laughs> Say, cause that, so the, the, most of the time, most defenses in the league are going to be somewhere in the 30s pressure-wise. I'm just saying overall. It could be 21 game. It could be something. Ours was like, I think, 31 or 32 last year. We were 51% on Sunday, 51. 
And I would guess that the only team in the league that might have been more than that would probably be in the Miami Dolphins because they blitz every day and get them down. So, or maybe the Giants because I know Wink blitzes a lot, but I doubt it. I doubt if they blitz 50%. Probably the lead leaguer, league leader last year was probably maybe over 40%. I don't know for sure exactly what it is, but I know usually the average is in the 30s. We were 51% pressure in that game Sunday, which is probably the most I've ever done in my career. Why, why, why was that? Because I felt like that's how we played. That's what the kind of team we got. So it's, it's, and it could be this week could be 10%. I don't, you know, I don't know. I'm going to do whatever the, the offense dictates to me. And so we're going to try to play to whatever our strengths are against that kind of offense. Some teams, you want to get after them and pressure them. Some teams, you better be careful. You know, you play Brady all the time. You better be a little careful when you pressure. You know, all of a sudden you give up big plays. And so and it depends on the people that we have. And I feel like we're, we're a pretty aggressive team, but that doesn't mean it's going to be 50% every week. I'm not shooting for that. All I'm shooting for as a signal caller is what's the best way to approach this team? And every week is going to be different. Last one. You, you answered what I was, what I was going with. Yeah. So, guys, good? Okay. Thanks. Please.